Right then folks, you join us today for a spot of mudline fishing. Um, you'd forgive me wearing this attire, we are actually in the middle of summer and not late autumn. Uh, so a cold and blustery day, so we're going to have a look in depth of fishing on the mud. Right then, let's have a look at rigs for fishing on the mudline. I've got two that are distinctively different. Starting with my positive rig, I'll just bring this into shot. So, I've got a 0.35 mud liner with a nice visible tip and then going down to the shot we've got six number eights on a three inch hook length and um, so it's a real positive rig when plenty of fish in your peg and they're not too cute and um, so I can anchor it right down and we're fishing directly on the bottom straight away and as soon as the fish picks that up it's going to hit that positive bolt and result in a positive bite. Um, and then moving on to lash length, I think that's really important. I see really good anglers fish with really, really short lashes when they're fishing on the mud. It's quite overcast today, but on bright days, you've got the shadow of the pole and you can't really control your rig. Like we're fishing in really windy conditions today, even though it looks like a mill pond. So we always tend to have a good length of line between pole float and tip. I've probably got 18 inches to two foot there. And you're thinking, oh, you're not gonna have enough control with that length of line. But by having three number nine back shot, I can hold it nice and tight and you can still get them hooked themselves against the resistance of the pole. So I think that's a really important element when fishing in that shallow water. So moving on to the negative rig, and I seem to use this one more and more often because um, they've seemed to wised up over the last 12 months especially to that traditional heavy positive rig where you're fishing um, with those shot right on your hook length knot and lifting into those positive indications. I feel when the fish come into your peg now, a lot of the time they're, they're flapping the fins about and almost feeling to see if there's any resistance in the peg. And if there is, you'll see them bolt out of the peg. So this is where the little stealthy negative rig comes into play more and more often. So I've got a 0.1 XL carbon there and I've got three number 10s just spread over the bottom, what's that, 10 inches of my rig. So so totally opposite to how we would fish that positive rig. So when one comes in the peg, it can wash your rig all over the place, but it doesn't bolt out your peg. So it's going to be able to stay in there and then you can just dress your rig back up and it's going to result in catching those crafty ones that are really feeling and knowing what's going on in your peg. And then same again, length of line above pole floating tip is really important. So we've got 18 inches to two foot there and three number nine back shots. So I can really control it. Um, it's windy today, I'm going to be able to hold on to it, still fish with it, um, and if it's bright, it's going to not inhibit the fish with that short lash as well. So that's rigs covered, let's move on to plumbing up. Um, so I've found a nice flat spot over there, it's about 19 inches deep, so ideal, anywhere from 12 to 24 inches is what you're looking for. Um, and then it's just a case of plumbing up, so just the body of float showing. I don't want to be just going right direct onto the tip so it's perfectly dead depth. I want that variant just to give me enough to make sure any detours on the lake bed on that far banking that I'm going to be fishing on the bottom properly um, and not too far over depth when they do pick that bait up. So what's another important factor when plumbing up? Um, you don't always have a nice flat bottom lot what we've got today over there. Sometimes you've had banks collapse and fish just naturally erode the banking and you end up with a sloping mud line which is far from ideal but if that's the only area in the peg that you can fish um, and that you need to catch in that shallow water, the rigs that I'd use for that is always that negative rig, that nice light carbon, so you can push it up the slope. So just marking it with a little bit of electrical tape on your big section, making sure you've got to the mark on your hand, on your knee, where you know where you are, and then you're sloping it up the, up the slope, and that's the best way you're gonna fish on like a sloping bank. Um, that positive rig goes totally out the window when you're trying to just lay up the bank there and catch those ones on the sloping bank. So, bait for fishing on the mud line, couldn't be simpler. Here at Partridge, I've got some milled it's mad on the ground bait, mixed up nice and wet and heavy, so it's gonna go straight onto the bottom, and then some maggots. Kicking off my peg today, I've got the big pot out, uh, put a, like a good handful of maggots in, and um, filling the pot full of ground bait, and then shipping it across the far bank in. Um, if it was in a normal match, I'd perhaps start down the edge and just keeping an eye on uh, the far bank until I could see some movement or some coloration, and then going and fishing it. 
um, and then introducing some ground bait with a large flexi putt, just filling it in and just plunking it in so it goes straight to the bottom and doesn't fall through the water column. You just want it to go straight into the bottom. That's been really important to mix it really heavy. Um, if you're not putting enough water in it, and especially enough water in it at the initial mix, it's going to go all over the place and you have a carp and F1s up in the water and you're going to end up with loads of foul lockers. So there's as much water in the ground bait as possible is an absolute must. Um, and topping up your peg, generally in a match situation, um, it's normally every third fish I've found on here. So you, if, if it's really good, you can get away with just kinder potting all day. As I say, we're on one of the best pegs in the country um, on the lake by ourselves. So probably just a case of just topping it up with a kinder pot. So, but if it was a match situation, you're pressured and you've got other people fishing on mud lines, I've generally found every third fish just putting another big pot in just to settle them back in and getting competing for food is, is normally a, a, a good rule of thumb. So I've only got maggots and ground bait with me today. Other baits I'd fish on the mud line would be like micro pellets, um, if places like you can't use ground bait or if there's loads of silverfish present and you can get impested with uh, silvers taking your maggots. And expander pellets can be great if you've got a load of debris on the bottom, if you've got some leaf mould and stuff. You, you naturally think your, your mud hole is going to be nice and clean because it's a dinner plate where they, where they should be feeding off. But um, places like Packington Summers on those snake lakes there, they're really dirty bottoms on the cross line, so like fishing ground bait and feed and fishing a big expander on the hook just masks um, your hook from getting caught on all that leaf, leaf debris and just results in a cleaner bite and a quicker bite really. So that's a, a good change of hook bait. So we've run through what we're doing feeding and bait wise. So let's talk about what we're actually doing, putting rig in the peg and how we're feeding the peg. So I've gone across with the positive rig and a little clump of ground bait as opposed to clagging it in loose and then just turning the pot over. And then with that positive rig, just waiting for it to straighten up and then just putting it all down on that dinner plate. And then I'm trying to keep a tight-ish line, as I say, it is quite windy, not that it looks it. And then a nice little lift, hopefully when one comes into the peg. So I've had to flick between the two rigs today. The, the lighter fairy rigs seem to be better when there's been a few more carp present. But when there's uh, some F1s about, that, that more posit one's just bow waved out my peg there. So what we're going to do is just repeat the process. So set that trap again. So a little squoes and nugget of ground bait with that positive rig. And so when I've been fishing that girly one, I've just been putting it in loose and line it up onto the mud. With that positive one, we're just clumping that little ball in and whizzing across. So just taking my time to line up where we're going on that far bank and just get a little clump out. Rig over the top, let it all straighten up, and then holding it a, a tight-ish line, I say, with the wind. Um, I suppose I better tell you where we are today. So we're at Partridge Lakes, a windy Partridge Lakes, on KV6, peg 149, so a very good peg. Um, there's no point sitting on a badden when, you, when you're um, doing some filming. But it's been quite good that it hasn't been like mega mega solid that it can be when when you're like pleasure fishing by yourself on the lake you have actually had to work for them so just flicking between those two rigs it's going to work so differently so say when, when there's loads of carp that light rig just fluttering about it's been so much better and if we're getting any silverfish problems or getting no indications of fish coming in my peg regularly that one's just pushed it up slightly so i'm just going to pull it away Keeping an eye on the clock, we get another 30 seconds if he hasn't gone under. I'm going to be inclined just to put a little bit more bait in via a big pot and try and draw some fish there. And as I say, if it was like a match scenario, perhaps you'd be resting it and looking down the edge 
or going on your shallow line, it's not always the case of hammering it. We are still quite early in the day. They generally like to feed on this a bit later in the day. So we'll just try and persevere with it for another 15 seconds. See if one will feel sorry for us as an indication then. Little stocky F1. Not a big fish, but a bite nonetheless. And that orange slick will probably look really savage for this little left one, but there's some there's a nice sized carp that don't want to give up in here. And the F1s pull like anything, and they're all inclined to do you around your own platform leg. Oh, it's actually a little baby carp. I thought it was an F1. Little pretty common, little lively one. So we'll slip him into the net. And I'm keeping an eye to see if I can see any fish moving into my peg. We're just going to repeat the process with a couple of maggots on the hook. A red and a white on. And that little, I say little, that fairly big nugget of ground bait in the flexi pot. And we'll whiz him out again. going to wait for that wind to ease because I don't want to feed not in the right spot and then I'm going to try and put my rig down the same hole waiting for it all to straighten up and then just release so one's just swirled straight away so that can be the trouble with that heavy rig that's been a carp in my peg there and he's felt that resistance on his body and he thought I'm having none of this I'm off so what we're gonna do is shit back a fair looker what we're gonna do is just try that lighter rig just because there don't seem to be many F1s about there now and they don't like that heavier rig does Mr Carp so double maggot again exactly the same it's just it's so much more natural in your peg. And then I'm going to just put that ground bait in, just loose. Fly him across the far bank in. I'll turn that pot over. Sure it's all come out and then the wind's trying to make me fish for squirrels and then if I can once the wind just drops down again it's really gusting I'm just going to try and pull that up onto the spot that we're fishing once we're swirled there and then just lower it down so that was an indication then and whereas if I was fishing with that heavy rig I'm con convinced it would have bolted against that heavy shot and come out the peg, but it's resulted in a a nice quick bite there. And hopefully uh, a carp on the end. Let's put him in the sock out the way. Might be a big F1 actually. And they love to do you around your own platform legs on here, so you'll see me standing up all over the place. Yeah, nice big F1. Big old warrior, he's too big to hold with my little hands. Just unhook him. And slide him safely into the net. Maggots are okay. Filling the pot up again. We'll try and catch Mr. Carp this time. Plunking that ground bait in. Straightening that rig up. 
and it's just settling over the dinner plate there, fishing the peg again. Indication, I'm not going to strike until it goes under. And there we go, nice quick bite. Taking my time on that first roller. Watching where the fish is. Got some nice coals behind, hopefully they're not gonna eat me end of my pole. I think it's just, just about safe. Some big dairy cows. Stick him in the pole suck. Just let him plod round. One again. I say you really would be mistaken to think it was an autumn's day today, how cold and windy it is. I haven't worn my windstopper for seems like months and now I'm not overly warm. But the fish don't seem to mind. Come on, Mr. F1. Oh, he nearly tried to do me round the leg then. He's determined to make me look very, uh, very silly on camera. There we go. Lovely, pristine F1. So just really important to get that slime off the line. Don't want none of that inhibiting our rig. And then a couple of fresh maggots on. Filling that flexi pot with that loose ground bait. And then we're gonna wing him across as well. And touching on that, that longer lash, it just makes, that we talked about a little bit earlier, just makes everything so much more comfortable when you're shipping out, shipping in, when you're fishing in windy conditions or bright conditions, it just, just makes your life so much, so much more comfortable. And with those three number nine back shot, I can just keep a nice tight line. And you're not going to miss any any bites fishing that longer lash with those back shot in place. Food mill to wait when they're uh, settled on that mud like they are at the minute. Pushing through the trees into the sock for safety. And I think we've got a carp this time. I thought he was gonna make me look really good and come straight up, but he's, uh, there he is. Nice little pretty mirror carp. I was gonna try and hold him up but he's having absolutely none of it so we'll just try and unhook him there he is look at that beautiful carp lovely, lovely scale pattern and we'll drop him gently into the net so this light rig does seem much better at the minute but as I say early, earlier on in the session swapping to that heavier rig was the way to go so it's not being stagnant and just keeping out on the same rig and just keeping that same feeding pattern if, you, if things aren't happening so don't be scared just to, to change to that heavy one and it can be so much better on its day so 
four bank marker, tapping that ground bite in, and then leaning the rig up as straight as we can in that wind. Just missed the bite then. But I didn't see one spook out my peg, so I'm not gonna go and refeed it. There's one spooked two foot to my right, but that isn't that isn't feeding on any bait that I've put in. Ooh, just missed another boat there. It might be silverfish. Okay, so one's just swirled next to my float, so fish present. And that one I've just pricked. So we're gonna refeed our peg. He swam out our peg, so there's no point carrying on fishing there when that fish has exited. We wanna re feed and redraw that fish back into the peg. Because it will have kicked that ground bait out of the swim and there won't be anything left. So we're gonna plump that in if the wind allows. So it just takes that second or two more, but it's going in the right hole as opposed to rushing it and it's ending two or three foot to the right or left. and not resulting in a nice, clean bite light, so. On both rollers there. Strip of the puller. Nice common carp. I must say, all the fish are in immaculate condition, considering they're literally fished for every single day of the year. They've all got all the fins, lovely mouths. Yeah, pristine condition. Which is nice to see. Right then, a nice chunky partridge F1. We'll call that the last one of the day. We'll slip him gently into the net. Very well behaved. Uh, it's been a wonderful day's uh, mud fishing in very windy conditions. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Just remember to give the video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. See you next time, folks.